Board Game Maniacs. Maniac Rob here to bring you another video. Uh, actually, it's a gameplay video that you're going to be able to see because you can click on the link below or it's going to be attached to the beginning of the, the game video itself. Uh, it's This is a game called Betrayal at House on the Hill. It's a game, it's been around for a little while. It's a three to six player game. And what you have to do is you're these, uh, I don't know if you call them investigators or just survivors. In any case, you're people who have to go into this old broken down house and you're exploring it. And while you explore, what happens is you're going to find these things. You're going to do these different dice roll traits to bring up all of your stats. You have four stats. Uh, two of them are physical and two of them are mental. And you want to bring up these stats as much as you can before the haunt goes off. Once the haunt goes off, somebody in your group of six people or up to six, three to six people is going to be determined the traitor by what it says in books, what it will say in the book. And it will tell you who's the traitor, what the traitor have to do, and what the survivors have to do to win the game. So it's pit up against each other, one against the group, or sometimes it's two against the group, or sometimes it's one starting off and they can convert other people into traitors and so forth. It's a really, really fun game. Um, it comes with, the, this is the core box right here, and I also have the expansion which is called Widow's Walk. I think there's roughly about 50 haunt scenarios that you can play into the core box. And when you buy the uh, Widow's Walk, which is the expansion, it's an extra 50 plus haunt scenarios that you can get. So you can play this game several, several times. So much replayable, uh, replay replayability into this because, again, you can play up to 100 plus haunts into this with the both expansions, like the expansion and the core box. Again, it's a really, really fun game. If you've seen this this gameplay before, or you played this game before, and you know the ins and outs, by all means, just uh, either fast forward this video or click on the link below to watch the gameplay. Now, before you do such things, just a little bit of uh, uh, comment about the rules. We played this game a, a few times in our game group before, but this is the first time we played it on video. And what we did is we customized the rules that are into the rule book. We changed them up slightly a little bit. I'll go over them in detail a little bit more. But just to let you know, we changed the rule set a little bit so that we have some house rules. Because we like changing up a little bit, making it a little bit more difficult. Or if we find the game is really difficult, we'll make it a little bit more easier. But again, the video that you're going to watch with the gameplay, you're going to notice some things. You're like, hey, that don't make sense. I played this game lots of times before and they're playing it wrong. We know we're playing it wrong in certain circumstances because, again, it is house rules that we're following. So, if you want to, if you want to know the list of the house rules and what we use to play it, just uh, send me an email at boardgamemaniacs at gmail.com or comment in the, uh, in the section below and ask me some questions. I'll get back to you for sure and I'll give you the list of house rules if you want or if you want to make any other comments, by all means, just comment below. and. When you watch the gameplay video, if you like it, watch the other videos that we have up. And also like and subscribe because we need some subscriptions for sure. This is just for fun to show everybody out there what different games you can play instead of playing video games and not being like face to face with people. Not that video games are bad. Video games have a different type of realm. But board games is really good because you get to physically play games with other people face to face and talk and, and create conversation and even arguments sometimes which you'll see in some of the videos. So again, click on the link or skip ahead to the gameplay. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do. I have to edit first to see how long the game is. And if it's too long, I may just put this as a little small separate video for the rules and so forth. So click on the link or fast forward if you want to see the game. If not, stick around. I'm going to go over the rule set and also I'll briefly touch upon the house rules that we did. So just stand by. First thing we're going to go over Maniacs is the figures, the miniatures that you get into the, the core box set. So in the core box set you get six figures, you can see them here and again two, a little boy, a little girl and then a younger female, a little older female, a doctor and a male. So these are all pre-painted. You don't have, when you open them up, you don't have to glue anything together. They're all pre-painted. They're all set on their bases and so forth. And it makes it pretty convenient because then you just have to take them out and you can start playing right away. So again, I don't know if this can go in focus or not. 
but that's one of them. This is the, the young female. She has a teddy bear and the big giant flashlight. She looks a little creepy and you know when you play the game and because yeah, it's a haunted house you know she definitely fits into the realm of being creepy. So and that girl too as well. Uh, her name you can see here I'll bring this up here. This is a stat card more or less that you get and it's double sided. So again you can pick whatever stats you want on whatever side to make it better. So the first side Zoe is her name, so Zoe Inkstrom. And you can see on this, I mentioned before in the video that there were physical traits and mental traits. So physical trait, speed, and might, and you start off in the green. So you have numbers and depending on what you do in the hunt, it'll go up and down. Sometimes it'll decrease and sometimes it won't. And then you have your mental traits, which are your sanity and your knowledge. And again, same thing. When you start the base game, you're going to start in the green by putting your pegs. So you have these little pegs, you can get in focus there, or clips I should say, and you take the clips and you clip, clip them onto the board. So you can see there's a nice little arrow and it's pointing to the stats. Now during the game, you're going to do certain things, certain tasks, and you can roll the die to see if you go up or down on certain traits. So again, if you go up more, you're just going to increase or you go down depending on what you do in the game. So one thing I have to say about this is they're made of cardboard, these character cards. I had this game for a while now and it has not been scratched or damaged in any way yet and I'm pretty hurt on my games. So it's it's really good quality build. The miniatures too as well, they, they kind of withstand, they're not broken off, they're not cheap plastic or anything I find. So yeah, you can see in focus. So again, there's Zoe or you can turn it around and you can pee you can be like Missy too as well. So depending on who you want to be again, so speed for Missy is five, but if you use this side, the beginning trait for Zoe is four. So again, the traits are different. And also you can see here, they have little uh, information about each character, such as age, height, weight, your hobbies, and your birthday. So when you play the game to determine what uh, person, what player goes first for first player is whoever's character card has the date closest to the, the date that you're playing. And that's one way. Another way that I've seen a play too as well is whoever's player's birthday is closest to their character's birthday. They go. So again, there's, you can customize this in different ways as well. But in the gameplay video, the way we played it is whatever character has the closest uh, date to the closest birthday to today's date that we played the game, that's who goes first. So again, this is one character. I will show you other characters too as well. Another one of the characters here is Heather. So you can see the speed, the speed, the might, the sanity, and knowledge. You can't really see it all on camera, but um, so again, their stats are different as opposed to Zoe's. Now, they have like their age, their height, like I said, the weight and everything. So it's pretty cool. You can make a whole complete backstory that will help kind of get you engulfed into the game if you want. And if you flip Heather's card over, there's also another one too as well, Jenny. So again, her stats here are a little different than what the other one was Heather. So you got a choice of which one you want to be. And that's her miniature. And she's bearing, carrying a big flashlight. Again, these are all pre-painted, no gluing, no nothing that has to be done. You take them and you play them right at the box. I'm not going to go over every character. There's only six characters, but I don't want to spend the whole time on every little detail of the game. People who've played the game before, you know, they're not going to be interested. Or if you really are interested in the game, by all means, just go out and buy the game because it's a lot of fun. I'll just show you this one last one. It's Ox Bellows or... Flash. In the game I played Flash. He's really fast. His speed you can see is a 6 and you can go higher or lower but I was pretty fast in the game. That's his figure here. And he's holding a flashlight. Yeah, the, the miniatures are, are not that bad quality. Um, I like putting miniatures together and painting them. I might repaint these guys. I'm not sure. Uh, another thing I seen online was people would take these cards and they would create their own character like oh I seen one that was Winnie the Pooh and they had a Winnie the Pooh figure and then they changed the stats and that so again they customize the game for different character play and everything but you know I, 
I like it simple. I'm not going to bother trying to customize it and keep it just like it is. Well, for now, anyhow. So let's go on to the next part of the game. The next part of the, the game content that you get is a whole lot of tokens. You can see there's tons and tons of tokens here. Now, these tokens are very important depending on what haunt is triggered and so on and so forth. So in the game we played, you notice we have, which was a plant token. I can't, There it is there. So plant token, this is one that we really used. And what this plant token did is you put this plant token in the room that you explored, as well as another one. Uh, it's either we'll say where to put it or, you know, of your choice on a different floor. And pretty much it's like a secret passage where you go through one plant, go through the secret passage to get to another. So it's a quick entrance and exit out of trouble or into trouble, whatever way you want to look at it. So that was a really cool token. Um, you also have other tokens such as this. This is monster tokens. You can see here, I don't know if we can get in focus there. There we go. So this here is a zombie token. Now again, depending on what haunt is triggered, you're gonna to have to use different types of tokens for the haunt. If you use the token where you control zombies, well then this is the zombie right here. And the way these zombie tokens work, or just the tokens in general for monsters is, these have movement and the way you do movement is you roll the, you roll the die and it'll tell you how many dice to roll and whatever you get is the speed of the characters you move that many spaces now two as well there's a, a number two on there that could be the how many dice you roll to get your speed and you can fight monsters in the game monsters can fight you if you fight a monster you don't you don't kill the monster but what you do is you'll stun it and when a monster is stunned, it will miss a turn. So if you hit this monster and you stun him, the trader has to flip the card over to the S, which stands for stun. So then you know that monster is stunned. So once that monster is stunned, they miss a turn, and then it goes on. They flip it back over onto their next turn. So again, that's one of the tokens as well. Another one which I want to talk about is tiny little disc tokens right here. These are explorer tokens. So this is new to the second expansion, which is uh, the Widow's Walk expansion. And with this one here, it has the token for what character you are. And uh, in the Widow's Walk expansion, you get different tiles. And the tiles that you, you go into, uh, and it, you know, it'll tell you our card, you know, place your Explorer token here. What it is, is you place that token in that tile and you get certain abilities and you leave that t that token on the tile and anybody else who goes into that room they can't get them special abilities either because you already took them you claim them so you uh, you drop your tile there to say like hey this is mine you can't come and you can't take my my abilities and it also can play other roles into the hunt too as well where you can give one to a player and during the hunt and if you want to get to that space where that player is, you can automatically teleport into that space with that other, uh, the other player during the hunt. So again, that's another one for the hunt token. And I'm not going to go over all the the, uh, the tokens you can get because it take me hours upon hours. Just read the book, and you know you will actually discover these obstacles during different hunts. Let's go over two more of them that seem to come up a lot into the games. And there are your obstacle tokens and your lock tokens. So obstacle tokens, they can be placed somewhere so that it will uh, hinder one of the survivors or the monster. And you have to roll to see if you can get over it or get through it or what have you. Uh, lock tokens can come into uh, some pretty handy things because uh, what it is is uh, you can draw some tiles that will tell you to lock a door or lock all the doors in the room so you're trapped. Then you have to roll dice to see if you can unlock it. If you unlock it, then you successfully unlock it, you can get out. And also too, as well as if there's an event, they could be like a, a rock fall or debris fall or what have you, so that you have to play with other parts of the game that can stop you and you know take more damage to you. So again, these are lock tokens, locked, lock one, and your obstacle tokens, obstacle 21. They're double-sided because that way there's not oodles and oodles and oodles of tokens, even though there is a lot of tokens in the game. But that's another one I just want to point out. So that's it for the tokens. I'm not going to go over any more detail. I showed you, I showed you monster tokens. I showed you a lot of tokens, obstacle tokens, player tokens, and so forth. So let's go on to the next part of the game content. In the box as well is the, the kind of like the meat and potatoes of the whole game. And these are your map tiles. So you can see you have a good stack of them here. And again, this 
has the uh, the expansion of Widow's Walk combined into it too as well. I don't know exactly how many uh, room tiles you get for the core game for the for the expansion game, but again, I just mix them all together. But pretty much what it is on the start of the game. Oh, hit the camera there. Huh. So in the start of the game, you get which is called the main entrance or entrance hallway with your foyer and grand staircase leading up to the upper floor. This is where all of your characters will start. So you start here in the main entrance and you can see there's doorways that you can exit out when you, when you go to a door, you flip a tile to explore. So again, just say flash, the speed is five. So we go up one, to and then you say, okay, I'm going to open this door and explore. So he opens the door, explores, you flip a tile over according to the main floor where you're at, or ground floor, I should say, and you go in and you keep going, so on and so forth. So when you get up to that door, here's a ground tile right here. So again, you grab the ground tile stack and you flip it over. And you know, this is the graveyard. So again, uh, some of the tile cards or tile map has text into it, it tells you stuff that you have to do and also has icons such as this. I'll go over what the icons mean because it tells you what cards to flip and so forth. So one thing I want to point out about uh, the game that we played where it was, this again, this is part of the house rules that I discussed. Now in the rule book it says that when you flip over one of the map tiles and you go into it and you have any card symbol onto it, your turn ends automatically at that map tile and you pull that card and you read it and you do the effect. Now, what the house rules that we did is if we pulled a card and it had one of these, we would read the event card or whatever, it's do, do what effects had to be done, and we continued on with their movement. Now again, that is a custom rule set that we created for our house rules. But in the book, it does state that when you flip over tile and you enter it and it has an icon, no matter what icon, it could be an item one, it could be an omen one and so on and so forth. Your turn ends and you do everything into that. So again, that's one of the custom house rules that we did. One thing too as well uh, that it does say in the book is if you flip over a card that has an icon of the raven, which is an omen card, your turn will automatically end no matter what. And you are going to resolve the omen card and then make a haunt roll. We still do a haunt roll in the custom uh, house rules and we still stop our turn when we flip over an omen card. But if the haunt did go off, then the player has a choice to either stop their turn at the when they flip over uh, one that has an omen card, or they can continue on after they resolve the effects of the card. Again, that is a house rule that we did. You'll see that in the video. So again, we don't play it exactly rule for rule. We kind of customize it because that's just what we do here at Board Game Maniacs. We are maniacs and sometimes we will customize things. What I want to point out is this long ruler with up to 12. What this is is your haunt counter or omen counter. So what you do is when you flip over one of your card stacks, which are here, and you get the raven icon or the omen icon, your turn ends or if you're playing house rules or what have you, um, if the hunt goes off for the house rules and you flip over an omen card, you don't have to stop your movement. But if the hunt did not go off yet and you hit an omen card, you do have to stop your movement. In any case, you have one of the black clips that you put onto the character card, you have one for here. So every time you reveal an omen card, um, what you do is you move up the tracker up one. And in the game, you got your six you have six die that you have to roll. And that number has to be uh, higher than what the number is for the haunt not to go off. If it is equal or lower than the number that you that are on the track, then that haunt is triggered and it starts a whole lot of chaos for everybody, including the trader. The next thing in the box that you get uh, that I want to talk to you about is the three different types of cards: the omen cards, the event cards, and the item cards. And if you notice. All of these cards have different icons. So whenever you flip over one of your map tiles, such as, okay, so this is your map stack, your map tile, you flip it over. Ah, see, this actually is a really good one. So it has text that you have to complete, like either to get out of the room or end your turn or what have you. And it has this icon, which is your item card. 
and it has another icon which is this one. Now, this is from the uh, the new Widow's Walk expansion set. This is what you call a dumbwaiter and when there's more than one of these dumbwaiters onto the game board, what you do, it's pretty much like a the way uh, a passage works. You can go from one dumbwaiter to the other dumbwaiter in different rooms or on the same different rooms in the same floor or a different room on a different floor. You know, in the rules, what this says is you can't go from like the basement to the attic or the roof from one dumbwaiter to the next. You actually you actually have to go through each floor. So if you're in the basement and you flip this over and you want to travel, you can travel from here to the ground floor. And then from the if you're in a dumbwaiter from the ground floor, you can go from there to the upper floor and so forth. So you can't skip floors. Now there's certain cards that you can get that will allow you to skip floors through dumbwaiters. You can go from one dumbwaiter on the ground floor and go all the way up to the attic if you want. And again, cards will do that and give you special abilities. So that here is an item and that is a dumbwaiter. Again, this is part of the expansion pack for the Widow's Walk. So talking about these cards, if you come up in that rule book, when you flip over, like I, I talked about this not even two minutes ago, I just want to stress upon this, is that, you know, you you pick up a card, you read it, you do whatever you're going to do into it, and your, your turn's supposed to end there when you pick up any one of these three types of cards. But we house ruled it that one, if you pick up an event or an item before the haunt goes off, you can continue on with your movement. When you pick up an omen card in the house rules, you stop. Your turn stops automatically before the honk goes off. After the honk goes off, you have a choice to keep moving or you can stop after you pull one of them omen cards. In the rule book, once you pull an omen card, your turn ends automatically before the honk and after the honk goes off. So again, that's a little difference. I already said this, but I want to completely stress upon this so that when you're watching the gameplay video, you don't think to yourself, you're playing this all wrong because we know that we were playing it wrong. We purposely played it differently according to what we played before for the house rules. So here's just an example of one of the cards you can get for the item card, like a med kit. A doctor's bag. I can't read that's kind of fair. Gotta stop looking in the camera and read this. A doctor's bag depleted in some critical resources. So again, Pretty much it tells you roll die and compare it to the chart and see what you get or what really happens. That's really bad. Some cards have all benefit things. Some cards have negative things happen to you. Some cards have negative things and benefit things depending on what you roll. So again, that's an item card. Pretty simple, straightforward. And event cards. So you see, every card is different and because when you trigger it, you flip over certain room tiles and different haunts will trigger different things and so forth. So again, this game is so replayable. It's not, it's not funny. Like you can have so many different games with this one box set. It's incredible. And then when you buy the expansion pack, it's even 50 plus more different games you can play into it. So again, if you're looking for a game that will constantly keep you entertained and challenge you, this here is one of the games to play for sure. The Betrayal at House on the Hill. And there's an Omen card. So Omen cards too as well. Whatever Omen card you, you pick up and when the haunt is triggered, that Omen card will determine what the haunt is, who the traitor is, and so on and so forth. So again, here's what I hear about the book. You can see the Raven icon on there. And at the end of every Omen card, it says, Make a Haunt Roll Now. If the haunt has already went off and you explored a new room, and you picked up an omen card, you don't make a haunt roll because the haunt roll already went off. So there's senseless to make another one, but you still get to keep whatever these great items are, which is a book for this one, a diary or lab notes. Again, this is really good. This here pretty much says, you know, gain two knowledge now. If you lose this book or if by losing it by a monster, taking it or another player after the haunt goes off, fight you, and steals a card onto you, then you're going to have some negative effects, losing to knowledge and so forth. Really, really fun. Next thing I want to talk to you about is the actual dice that you use in the game. So it looks like ordinary dice, but you can notice all dice have blank sides. 
to have one, two, one, two, and blank side. So there's no number threes or higher on these dies. They only go up to two, so blank up to two. Now again, when you are rolling for effects and if you roll some blanks, it counts as zero, so therefore you're safe. Other times, you know, if you roll a zero and it says that you're, you know, it's detrimental. So it all depends on what you're gonna roll. So with this two as well, you get eight die, and to do a hunt, you're gonna use six of the eight to make the roll. And I'll tell you what exactly what to do for your hunt roll and everything. So again, that's the die that dice that you get. Now, last but not least, what I want to talk about briefly is the books that you get into the uh, into the core box set as well as the expansion. So you have your rule book, which says rule book, and I definitely would suggest to read this cover to cover before you even start to play the game. Because it will pretty much explain everything that you need to know to play the game, obviously, because it's a rule book. But some things you're not going to be sure about, but it, it pretty much explains it in best that it can. So again, talking about the monsters and when you stun them and so forth. It also has the glossary, which I think is really important. So, on top of that, this here is pretty much like the... The basic rule book for the expansion for Widow's Walk tells you about the, the haunt and so forth. So, um, one thing I want to point about this is, you know, you may think like, well, how do you know what haunt happens and so forth? So the haunt is determined by the location you're at when the haunt goes off, the omen card that is picked up. So when you do that, you would just look in the chart. If it's from the newer expansion, of the widow's walk if it's in the core set it's still exactly the same thing but you would look on the, the rule book one for this or the beginning of the trader's tune to find out which haunt is triggered so all you would do is say okay well then i was in the dining room and i got the omen box so dining room and you find the omen box which is here and or the box i should say so look it says right there oh it's a uh, haunt number 61 or, yeah, hunt number 61. So you would find, you know, it will tell you exactly in the rule book who's the trader, what hunt to go to, which is hunt 61, obviously, and so forth. Now, what is really cool about this game is you can see these books behind me that do not read. Survival, do not read. And this is the trader's tome, do not read. And the reason why they say don't read this even when you, oh, because when you open up a new game box, you want to read everything, you want to look through everything. Don't look through these that say do not read. And the reason why is you want to wait until you play the game, because that way you don't know what the haunts are going to be, and it's going to make it more interesting for you. So, if you were a trader, trader's tome, and, you know, because of the haunt that's triggered and so forth, you become the trader, then... You're going to find out what traders you would turn. I'm just going to give you a brief. I want to go into detail here because I want to give secrets away. No, no, no. See, look, this hunt, just to let you know, goes up to page 50 because this is your the core rule set. So you got 50 hunts. So, therefore, if you open up this one, the trader's tomb from this is the Widow's Walk. You would open it up. And 51, Hunt 51, right there. And it tells you what it is, what you have to accomplish, and everything else too as well. So, I'm not going in detail about what's in these because it's a complete secret. And I don't want to ruin the secret because it takes away from the fun of the board game. But, for every trader, Tome, you'll have a survival Tome book. So, do not read unless you're a survivor. You turned out a haunt and so forth. And there's the expansion for it. So again, you got from one haunt to 100 haunts. So again, the playability in this game is phenomenal. I don't know what else to say about this except for, for playability for this game, I would give it a 12 out of 10. Uh, for enjoyment, I'd give it a, probably a solid 8. 7, between 7 and a half and 8 for sure. I love this game. I played it a lot. Um, well, not a lot, but the times that I did play it, I always had fun. The, the video that you're going to watch with the gameplay, it is the largest mansion setup that we had ever played before. 
and it is the most interactive for the trader for this one. Other times we had like monsters and so forth. So this one here is probably the best trader interaction uh, hunt scenario that we ever played. And it's the first one on camera. I'm glad it happened because it was such a great battle. And one more time I'm just stressing too as well is we're, there are different rules that are in the video as opposed to the, what's into the rule books. So it is house rules that we did. If you have any other comments or questions, please, by all means, you can email us at boardgamemaniacs at gmail.com or you can comment into the comment section down below if you want. Again, I'm not sure if this video is going to be linked to the beginning of the gameplay or it's going to be a separate video. So if it's a separate video, there will be a link down below. You can click on it to skip ahead and go just to the gameplay. Or if it is the same video, you can just fast forward, click ahead so that you can go to the gameplay and you can skip all of this if you want. So Board Game Maniacs, have a lot of fun. Talk to people, play games, and most importantly of all, when it comes to board gaming, be a maniac.